So you've installed Jekyll and now it's time to run Jekyll on your site. There's two ways to do this and they both run on the command line. First we can run Jekyll serve. So that's going to run Jekyll on your current source directory. It's going to process your site and output it to underscore site in your current directory. And it's going to start up a development server uh, on localhost port 4000. Um, so we can visit this in the browser and look at the functioning website. Anytime we make a change to the website, it will trigger a build and this development server will update with the latest copy. So this is really good while we're developing uh, because we can be making changes and they appear in the browser immediately. So I'll close that and the other option is Jekyll build. And this just builds the site and outputs it to the underscore site directory. From here you would copy the contents of your underscore site directory uh, and upload it to your hosting provider. So this is just running a one-off build. And we can also supply flags to these commands. For example, if I add dash dash drafts, uh, it's going to build the website and include all my draft blog posts. And I'll quickly run through all the options available. So if you want to change the source directory, you can use dash s and then give it the path to your Jekyll site. Uh, you can change the destination with dash d uh, if you don't want it to be underscore site in the current directory. Uh, we can trigger safe mode. Uh, so this is going to disable any custom plugins. Um, there's some hosting providers which don't support plugins. So this is a way of simulating their environment. Dash w. Uh, serve does this automatically, but what it does is it will watch your directory and regenerate the site when any files change. Uh, you can specify different configuration files uh, with dash dash config uh, and then list your files. We can have an environment variable by specifying Jekyll inf and passing the environment. So this is useful if you have configuration for a production environment, which is different from your development environment. Uh, future, which will publish blog posts with a date in the future. Uh, LSI, uh, Jekyll has a special algorithm for generating related posts, which is off by default because it's quite slow. Uh, so this turns it on. Uh, you can limit the number of posts that will um, be added to your site. This is useful if you have a huge site and you just want to do a really fast build of part of the website. You could just limit it to a certain number of posts. Force polling. I've never had to use this, but for whatever reason, if Jekyll isn't rebuilding your site when you change a file, um, this would force it to. Verbose is going to give you more output uh, in the command line, which can help with debugging. Quiet is going to do the opposite. It's going to give you less output. And incremental is a new Jekyll feature that will only rebuild the posts and pages that have changed instead of rebuilding the whole site. So that's all the configuration options and I encourage you to check out the Jekyll documentation if you want to learn more about these. This tutorial was brought to you by Cloud Cannon, the cloud content management system for Jekyll. For more free tutorials like this one, check out learn.cloudcannon.com.